All right, let's try to solve this inequality. 8 divided by 2x plus 5 is less than 3. We're going to do this just graphically using Desmos, the graphing calculator. It's free to use online. And we're just going to type this in over here. And then I'm going to show you a couple of tricks to make this easier to understand. So 8 divided by 2x plus 5. Now there's that curve, the function like f of x is 8 over 2x plus 5. And when is that less than 3? Ooh, okay, we get these huge bars here that sort of show us portions of the graph. There's a dashed line there. This is actually a little bit difficult to understand. I'm instead going to go back to the function, and I'm going to also graph y equals 3. So I'm going to turn this into a, maybe using function notation. f of x equals this, and then y equals 3. And you can see where do they intersect. It's right there. Now, other than this little section up here, if I zoom out, you can see, other than this section here, the graph is underneath this line y equals 3. So all this under here, f of x is less than 3. This is the portion we're looking for. So now we just have to be able to describe this in a meaningful way. What is going on here? Where are things on this graph? Now, if you can read this equation, you can see that x is not allowed to be negative 5 halves. That would make this denominator 0. So I'm going to just plot that as well. x equals negative 5 halves. There it is as kind of a green line. Maybe I'm going to turn that into a dashed line, maybe a dotted line. Let's make this a little bit easier to see. Okay, so we have this dot dashed line here. This is the vertical asymptote that happens because of this denominator having the potential to become 0. The function approaches that asymptote on the right and on the left. And on the entire left-hand branch of this, it's underneath this line y equals 3. Now this point, approximately negative 1.167 and 3, this helps to tell us where the, um, where the function is underneath. It's everywhere to the right of that spot. Not including that spot because we... Um, we have a less than sign in our um, in our equation. So I'm just going to type f of x less than 3 now and show you those bars again. They're purple this time. It's everything up to but not including that asymptote and everything from that line onwards. I'll just kind of show you that one more time. Let's click this little spot, that intersection point between the curve and 3. So we identified the asymptote. We identified that number we're trying to be less than, and uh, together those help us to find out where the um, intervals are, the regions where the function is underneath the number 3. Okay, what if we have something a little bit more complicated, like x plus 1 over x minus 7 is greater than um, x squared divided by 2x uh, plus 1. Now, we've got a bunch of bars here, and it's difficult to see where exactly those are. Uh, well, that one's not too bad, actually. These ones are actually pretty good. I did all right there. But oftentimes, these will be like decimal values. So what can we do is we can start making these into corresponding equations. So if I do like uh, x plus 1 and x minus 7, that is one curve. And if I do maybe a g of x, and we call that x squared, and 2x plus 1, and now we can start to look for where is one greater than the other. And to do that, we want to find intersection points. So there's an intersection point right there. And we also need to find asymptotes, because on either side of an asymptote, a curve can be below on one side and above on the other. So we look for the asymptotes for each one. So the asymptote for f of x is the line x equals 7. And for g of x is the line x equals negative 1 half. Uh, and you can't see the x equals 7. There it is over there. Let's turn those into dashed lines, dotted lines, to make them easier to see again. Okay, now we're getting at uh, on why we have this inequality. So right there, where this curve, which is the g of x curve, 
meets this vertical asymptote, the one that came from f of x, that's where it crosses from being above to being below because, let me zoom out, you see f of x is up here in that region. Now there, at this uh, unusual point, looks like about nine and a third, that's where they cross each other and now the f curve is above the g curve and we have the inequality being true in that zone. Our basic steps are to take the left side of the inequality and write a corresponding rational function. Take the right side of the inequality, write a corresponding rational function. Set up the inequality here and you can even do this just by writing f of x is greater than g of x now. That'll show you the regions. Now to get the exact values you have to consider the vertical asymptotes there and there and also any intersection points that you can find. And here we have one intersection point right there. They're always going to happen at these boundaries, these regions where the, uh, uh, the shaded area changes. So it looks like we have everything less than this value here, which is uh, looks like negative a half. So less than negative a half and between seven and nine and a third. So that's the solution to the inequality.